Hello everyone. Welcome to Power Electronics Tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss on single pulse width modulation. In one of my previous videos, I have presented a detailed analysis of the working principle of the single phase full bridge inverter. The circuit for the same is shown here. It should be noted that the output voltage of this inverter is continuous for the full cycle of operation as shown in the waveform here. This is due to the way in which the base voltages for the transistors in the circuit are designed. These base voltages are shown in the waveforms 1 and 2 respectively. Note that the base drive voltages are applied for the complete half cycle duration of T0 by 2. This means that the RMS value of the output voltage is equal to plus Vs and this cannot be controlled. Please note I am not going to discuss the working principle of the full bridge inverter. I already have made a video on that and you can watch the same by clicking the link shown in the top right corner right now. I will also leave the link of that video in the description below. Coming back to the circuit. Sometimes it becomes required to control the output voltage of the inverters due to reasons such as dealing with input DC voltage variations, controlling the output voltage and sometimes for the constant voltage or frequency control requirement. This can be accomplished by the use of pulse width modulation control techniques. In this video, I am going to discuss on the first pulse width modulation control technique to control the output of the full bridge inverter. And this technique is called as single pulse width modulation control. Let us now start discussing on the single pulse width modulation. In a single pulse width modulation technique, a triangular carrier signal with frequency Fc is compared with a rectangular reference signal with frequency Fr. Whenever the two signals overlap, a corresponding pulse is generated which will drive the base of the transistors used in the full bridge inverter circuit shown before. When both the reference and the carrier signals are positive and overlapping, a base drive signal is generated that will drive the transistors Q1 and Q2. Please note these are the two transistors I am referring on. Coming back, when both the reference signal and the carrier signals are negative and overlapping, a base drive signal is generated that will drive the transistors Q3 and Q4. Now I am talking about the alternating transistors. The width of the base drive pulse which is denoted as delta can be controlled by varying the reference signal amplitude with respect to the carrier signal amplitude. Let the reference signal amplitude be denoted as AR and the carrier signal amplitude be denoted as AC. You should note that when AR which is the reference signal amplitude is zero, the reference and carrier signals do not overlap at all and therefore no base drive pulse will be generated. On the other hand, when the reference signal amplitude AR is equal to the carrier signal amplitude AC, the two signals completely overlap for the complete half cycle duration and a pulse of width pi will be generated. When the base drive pulses so created are fed to the full bridge inverter, the output waveform is characterized by a single pulse per half cycle and hence the name single pulse width modulation. It should be noted that in the single pulse width modulation technique, the frequency of the carrier signal Fc and the reference signal Fr are equal. Further, the frequency of the output signal is determined by the frequency of the reference signal Fr. Coming to the mathematical part of the discussion, the ratio of Ar which is a reference signal amplitude to the carrier signal amplitude AC is called the modulation index and it acts as the control variable. The instantaneous output voltage is given by V0 equals to Vs which is a supply voltage multiplied by G1 minus G4. G1 is given by this voltage which drives the transistors Q1 and Q2 and G4 represents this voltage which drives the transistors Q3 and Q4 respectively. 
We already know that the output RMS voltage is equal to Vs for a single phase full bridge inverter. When single pulse width modulation technique is applied to drive the transistors of a full bridge inverter circuit, then assuming the width of each pulse is represented by delta, the RMS output voltage is given by V0 equals 2 by 2 pi integral pi minus delta divided by 2 to pi plus delta divided by 2 multiplied by V0 square. However, V0 is equals to Vs. Therefore, it becomes Vs square d omega t whole to the power 1 by 2. After simplifying this, you will note that the output RMS voltage by the application of single pulse width modulation technique to a full bridge inverter is equal to Vs multiplied by square root of delta divided by pi, where delta is the width of the pulse generated in each half cycle. Coming back to the waveforms for the single pulse width modulation, one of the biggest disadvantages of this technique is the presence of harmonic content due to the creation of a single pulse per half cycle. I will explain how to overcome this disadvantage in my next video. So stay tuned. Well, that is all about the discussion on the single pulse width modulation control technique for the controlling of the full bridge inverter output. If you like this video, then kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos on power electronics. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.